I'm Nan Geschke, your host of the Los Altos History Show. Tonight we have as our guests Ruth and Wallace Erickson. Welcome, Ruth and, er and Wallace. Thanks Thank for you. joining us tonight. Th Thank you for inviting us. Ruth and Wallace were born in Mountain View. They went to high school together and fell in love. They married and have lived in Los Altos in the same house for more than 50 years. Their story is becoming more of an endangered species in the fast track lane of what we now call Silicon Valley. So that's one of the reasons why I invited them to, to tell their story, which may not have been so unusual 50 years ago, but today it is. So Ruth, first tell us a little bit about your family background. I understand that you had actually two grandparents, two sets of grandparents who, who lived here in the Los Altos area. Yes, I did. Uh, my mother's uh, family was Mark and Grace Stevens and their property was at the very end of Levin Avenue in Mountain View where they planted 14 acres of uh, prunes. Uh, they lived there until 1935. Uh, my father's family, uh, Barney and Juliet Job, uh, had their two, two uh, parcels of orchards on Grant Road and the family home was built on one which was almost right across the street from uh, the now uh, uh, hospital, the El Camino Hos oh, Hospital. Oh, sure. So mm -hmm. not too far away. And that property is right on the borderline of Mountain View and Los Alvis now. Uh, they, they also farmed until about 1935, until both sets of grandparents were too old to farm anymore. Now, do you remember helping them out on the farm oh, at all? I remember cutting apricots very well every summer. My mother, my, my brother and I, my older brother and I, uh, Tom were at the same table, uh, a tray, and cutting apricots, and I remember that very well. And getting so tired as a child, but um, well, that was the sport because yes. we've heard from more people that you know that's what you did in that's the summer what, times. That's what you did, especially if you had grand uh, grandparents who raised those apricots. Sure. Now, Wallace, I understand your your uh, family also uh, had moved here to California. Uh, in what in the beginning of the century? 1916. Or, or 1916. Yes, my father was Walter, and my mother Ethel moved. Uh, my father was coming, uh, came to Mountain View to buy uh, Pearson groceries and feed and fuel oh, in okay. Mountain View. And right so it, there on uh, uh, Castro it, it Street. It was in the 200 block of Castro, Castro Street. Street, and then subsequently they moved to the east side of Castro and carried on a grocery business there for several years. Now, did you work in the grocery store? Yes. Uh, at the age of 14, I was able to get a driver's license, and so I delivered groceries for my father. And some at of the, age 14? Some huh? of the groceries I delivered into uh, Los Aldis, uh, known as Mountain View in those days. Uh, I would take uh, groceries as far as uh, behind uh, Los Aldos Country Club, where there were oh, families sure. living. So what did you drive? Well, I, I drove a Model A pickup truck. A Model A Ford uh, pickup, pickup truck. truck. Uh -huh. what, what year do you remember? Probably don't remember uh, that. That would be 1929. Uh, a 29 uh, uh, Model A, huh? Oh, 1929 Model A, but I drove it about uh, when I was a 14, so that would make it about 1933. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. That's, that's, that's. So, um, Ruth, now when did your family move to Los Altos? Well, uh, the Stevens family, my grandfather Stevens, Mark, was born in uh, Spanish Town, which we now know as Half Moon Bay. 
and that was in 1856. And uh, my grandmother was born in Ohio and came to California when she was four years old with her parents. Mm -hmm. That was about in 1868. And uh, they married uh, later and, and raised their family in, in Mountain View, um, first on uh, Springer Road. And then they went over on, on to Grant uh, Levin Avenue. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then my mother and father knew each other. They grew up together, went to the same grammar school on uh, old Mountain View um, El Camino Highway School. And they, they married um, uh, in the Second World War. First World War. Uh, First World War, War yes. Uh -huh. And um, four days later, my father went off to the Navy in t to war. Four days later. Four days later. Mm -hmm. wow. So, uh, and then you, your family moved to Los Altos. At, in, in my family moved to Los Altos. Uh, my father built a little home for us on one of the parcels of land that uh, one of the orchards that my uh, Barney Job had on mm -hmm. Grant Road, and then he wanted to sell that property about 1928. So we had to, to move, and. Uh, also, my baby brother had died in 1928 when he was only 19 months old of oh. pneumonia. So that Very was another sad. reason to, to leave that house. Mm -hmm. And since my father was in business in Palo Alto in an electric shop up there, we moved to Los Alamos, which was just one step closer to Palo Alto and to his, his business up there. So we came to Los Alamos in 1929. and. Um, rented a home, a home very close to the home where we now live so we could watch the building of our present, the, the present home that we are now in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we moved into that home in 1930. Right. Mm -hmm. You also said that that's the home you're in. Yes. And it's at, at, at one point you had, uh, you, you were able to get a picture of the four generations. Your, yes. Your After the Stevenses. Uh, left their, their ranch. Um, they came to live with us in Los Altos. Mm -hmm. My grandfather soon passed away. My grandmother continued living with our family until she died when she was 93. And so there were four generations living in, in, this, in the same proximity, right next door to each other. Yeah, I think we have a picture of that. Yes, so I we'll think share you that, do. Share that, mm -hmm. we'll share that with uh -huh. our viewers now. And it was a very happy time for everybody. We had uh, an extended family around us all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, the Jobs were still there too, and the Stevenses. Now you grew up in in Los Altos as a girl. What do you remember about the, um, the your school and and some of the teachers and, and classmates? Are well, Los Altos Grammar School was a very nice, friendly grammar school. It was small. There was only 320 students. Was there. that the one on San Antonio? Yes, Road? the old San Antonio mm -hmm. Grammar School where the, uh, the real estate office is mm -hmm. now, well, right next next to uh, History House and the library. Uh -huh. And um, uh, it, it was um, a very stable school. The, the students didn't come and go very often like they do these days. The teachers were all uh, uh, st teachers that had been there for uh, several years. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Keg was the uh, teacher that I highly respected. I was fortunate now I know I was fortunate enough to have her for two years. At that time, I thought, you know, not quite fair because she was a tough teacher, but she was very fair and she was a very excellent teacher. And I remember her as an outstanding teacher. The principals I remember, the first one was Mary Weibel. She wasn't there too long after I came. I entered in the, the, the second half of the third grade. And then uh, we had Howard Pease, who was an author. He wrote. Um, uh, boys' adventure books, mm -hmm. and he was an excellent principal too. The kids all liked him. The teachers liked him too. Next, we had um, Matt Filgen, uh, and he, he was very interested in theater, and he was uh, one uh, of the instigators of starting the community players that we had in Los Alamos for several years. It was very active. Oh, good. Well, let me ask Wallace mm -hmm. now what it was. Uh, you, I, I understand you and Ruth met in high school. Uh, and at Mountain View High, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like to uh, to uh, be in high school in the in the late 30s? Give us a little snapshot, Wallace. Well, of course, uh, Mountain View and Los Aldis pupils were all in the Castro Street uh, school. School, yeah, sure. We had just one high school, and uh, well, from my standpoint, uh, school was school to prepare yourself for college. Uh -huh. 
And uh, I also worked about 35 to 40 hours a week besides going to school, which I did through my uh, sophomore year. But uh, uh, Ruth and I met uh, while I played some clarinet in the, uh, in the orchestra and band. Ruth was a bass viol player in, uh, in the orchestra. And what did you play? And I played the clarinet, and so I could look over the music stand and see this young woman, <laughs> <laughs> girl, in those days. And uh, that's how we yeah. came to know each other. Now, I know you uh, started driving when you were 14, but you also had a love affair with cars, I understand, Wallace. Well, yeah. I started out at a very young age uh, driving. And, uh, and you said I, you my first car was a Ford Model T, which I paid four dollars for. Oh, wow. And uh, the second car was a Ford Model T, which I paid fifteen dollars for, and the Ruth had the opportunity to ride with me in that. And I think we have a picture of that on our screen right now, so I'll give you a little if, if, uh, picture of what, uh, what it was like to drive around in those days. Now, I understand now, did you get married right out of high school, Ruth? No. No. Uh, Wallace had, had a college in, in that was his main goal, mm -hmm. and that, that was my goal for him, too. But I only went to, to college uh, for one year at San Jose State, and then I took a job at the uh, long-distance telephone uh, office in Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I worked while Wallace went to, uh, to uh, first San Jose State, and then he transferred to, uh, to Stanford. And you got your degree in? In uh, metallurgical engineering. engineering. Okay. Uh, and we, we married at the end of his junior year at Stanford, yeah. and we lived in Palo Alto at that time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So um, what was it like to be a young married couple in the 1950s here in Los Altos? Because, you know, we, we live a very different life now, you know, in, in terms of how children are raised. I mean, give us a little idea of what it was like then, Ruth, uh, as a sort of a, a, a mom and dad. You know, in, well, in the fifties, it, it was a very busy time for us because when Wallace uh, finished Stanford, he had uh, debts and le loans mm -hmm. to pay back to Stanford, so it meant uh, hard work for us and watching our pennies. But that didn't seem to make any difference. Um, you had four children. We, uh, well, we eventually had four mm -hmm. children. Uh, we lived in a, in a quiet neighborhood where all the mothers were stay-at-home moms, and. Um, we got to know each other very well. We, we were friendly with one another. And finally, uh, the moms all got together and once a week would meet at one person's house and do any job in the house that she wanted done. I like love that. Wash <laughs> windows, take down the curtains and wash and iron them and put them back up. Oh, I would, polish we should do that now. And <laughs> then the hostess would, would have uh, dessert for everybody. Uh -huh. And that was a happy, fun time. We all enjoyed doing that. The children all got together, got along together very well. Now, what were your children's names? Uh, our oldest is Wally Jr. Uh huh. Uh, then there's Susan, and Miriam, and Tom. Tom is the only one who still lives in this area. Okay. And you also said that as couples, you socialized, and you also formed a, a sort of a cooperative, and 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 tried to hire uh, one of your. A, pa a pastor for your church, is that oh, right? Oh, yes. We became very interested in this group who was uh, starting to form an, another um, Protestant church for Los Alamos, and they decided on a Methodist church. So we uh, joined in with them, and uh, they had already uh, secured property for it uh, on Magdalena and Foothill Expressway right across from Rancho, and, but they didn't have any more money. At that time, uh, Martin Tafe had uh, a crop of apricots that he couldn't do anything with, so he offered the apricots to us. And so the men came home from work in the evening and picked apricots, and the women cut apricots all day long, and one of the women stayed home and took care of all the kids. And we cut, we dried, we sold the apricots, and had enough money to hire our first minister. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, with that story, I guess we're going to have to end for now. but. Uh, thank you so much for coming to the studio and sharing a little snapshot of what, what it was like to grow up here and raise a family. And uh, Ruth and Wallace were kind enough to invite us to, uh, uh, to their home of over 50 years in an area of Los Altos called Los Altos Park. And uh, we please stay tuned to hear more about their lovely home and, and about their garden. So let's roll that tape, and again, thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very Thank much, you. Dan. Thank you for inviting us.
I'm here with Ruth uh, on a beautiful uh, March day, and we're in, in front of her beautiful home in the Los Altos Park area, which is in North Los Altos. And I know this is an old neighborhood, Ruth. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, isn't it is an old neighborhood. It was subdivided in about 1925, and uh, it didn't take off very well until after the Depression. Uh, then a few homes were built here, but not very many. Uh, my father and mother bought this property in about 1929 when my dad designed our house here. He did all the designing and he even made the working blueprints, although he was uh, uh, an electrician. Uh, he was able to do that, and um, and I thought, and he was inspired by uh, Burge Clark. I yes, understand. Uh, since he was an electrician, I'm sure that he must have wired some of Burge Clark's houses in Palo Alto, and he saw what was what was new and the the latest thing. So he put in some of his those ideas from Burge Clark in our house. Oh, that's interesting. Now we're standing in front of a a gate which looks uh, very old, Ruth. Well, it is very old, and. Um, it isn't actually the original gate, but it's, it's, it's quite, quite old. And the um, hinges and this J that you see over there was made at Mount View High School um, Metals Working Shop. And my brother did that when he was in high school. Tom and Job made these. That's why the J, Job, was, our maiden, was my maiden name, the family name here. And it's been here ever since. It's, as you can see, it's being held together by them supports here but it's still going <laughs> and it looks looks like it's it's had it's had a very long tour of duty. It certainly has. <laughs> and the fence too is, is... The fence is very old. It, it was put in around 1932 or so. And my dad went to Pescadero and bought the six foot long grape stakes that he split lengthwise and cut them in half and, and made our picket fence. That's wonderful. Now, Ruth, let's talk a little bit about your home and some of the features of the home. I know that um, this this roof, is that original roof? It's the original roof on the, the bottom story here, the first story, that is original. Uh -huh. uh, that's handmade tile and it's um, it's called mission style because it's, it's um, tapered and the taper, they say, is made by the Indians putting the, the uh, clay over their thigh and uh -huh. that made the taper. Oh. You can even see fingerprints on those uh, tiles up there. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's The second story we added later in 1961 and that is a, a same style tile but is not as old. Not as old. No. So um, I thought maybe we could walk up t towards your front door mm -hmm. and you could talk to us a little bit about what's going on up in that area. All right. So let's do that. All right. Now, Ruth, uh, we're standing here in your uh, your entranceway. Uh, I've noticed that these 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 posts are are chipped, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of unusual. I haven't seen that before. Yes, that's called adzing. It's done with a, an old-fashioned, uh, very sharp hole-like thing, and all these beams and the beams in the house were actually processed right here on the front porch by this man who had his ads. He put the the beam between his legs and just hack away on it and uh, make them look um, old that, that way. They do. They have a very rustic mm -hmm. uh, feel about them. And what about that door now? Is that is that an original door? No, that door was made in the um, late 60s. We came across an artist who lived here in Los Altos, a woman uh, that was very talented in many uh, forms of art, but wood carving was a specialty of hers. What was her and, name? Um, her name was Rosemary Nastich. Rosemary she lived Nastich. on Covington Road, and she um, took on the job of her front door for us and we we're very very pleased with it it's the same on the inside as it is on the outside it gives the the home that sort of mediterranean mm -hmm. character that mm -hmm. uh, is you know so indicative you know of of this style of architecture yes yes and in this bench too i guess that we're standing next yeah. to that she all, made that also she did she made that, that that's well. a part of our dining room set but we don't have room in the dining room for it so it's it's out here it's 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 it lives outdoors. It lives outdoors. <laughs> As you can see, it's kind of rugged now. Right. <laughs> now, I've noticed, too, that there's a wonderful uh, tile picture uh, on your, on your mm -hmm. chimney. 
Uh, was that here originally, or was that that an, an was addition? made that was made not too long ago, maybe about six years ago, by a very dear friend of mine, um, who is an artist, as you can see. Yes. Uh, my hobby is doing a counted cross stitch, and I made her a piece uh, that she thought the world of, and she made this for me. Oh, it's really uh, lovely. Yeah. Her name was Marthine Galloway, and she lived over in Woodside. Well, it's a very mm -hmm. handsome addition. It is. It to truly your home. is. And it really, it's, it really belongs to the. That this, niche this was style. there. The niche was already in in the. Uh, just waiting uh, for it. In the it. chimney, just waiting for it. Yeah, it's lovely. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's time to go in. Shall All we right. go? Let's go. Great. Now we're inside your living room, Ruth, mm -hmm. um, and I noticed. Uh, uh, well, I'm noticing a lot of things. Um, but I noticed the chipped wood again. It yes, some more of this adzing than uh, the, um, the main beam, the rafters. It's, it's all been adzed on all four sides. And uh, we have never uh, done anything to them. That's the original finish up there. It since, is. Since 1930 when this house was completed. So this house will be 70 years old this summer. 70 years mm -hmm. old. And you are your, fam and your, your mother and father your grandmother and you are the, have been the only occupants. Is that correct? Oh yes, except for one year when we were visit, when traveling, we had a family that leased the house. They took better care of it than we did while we were gone. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Ruth, is this chandelier original? No, it's not. Uh, we found this in a shop and on Second Street in Los Alamos one day. Uh, a shop called um, the Pepper Tree. It's no longer there. Oh, I remember that shop. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. They imported things from Mexico and other places, and we just thought that looked like we should have it. So well, it, it looks went. like it really belongs. Like yeah, it could it, have been here. Yeah, that's right. right. And those are candles, and we light them on very special occasions. Very special, like when our son came home from Vietnam, we had that going. <laughs> oh, that must have been marvelous. It, it was. It gives the room a really nice light. Oh, I can mm -hmm. imagine. Now, that archway between the living room and the dining room, now, I, I, I suspect that might be an original that's, arch. That's the original arch, and the, the two steps that divide the living room and dining room is another Burge Clark's uh, idea. Yeah. Uh, that's... That's uh, original, the, the steps are. The flooring in the dining room is uh, not. We had hardwood floor, but with our family, um, uh, we really beat it down. So we replaced it a number of years ago, and the tile's working well. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the, the furniture, too, it looks like it was carved by that same By, uh, by Rosemary Nastich. And she figured that we needed benches, since the room is so small, chairs would, eight chairs would be too many chairs in one room. So she thought the benches would be heavier and wouldn't move around as much. And it works very well, except when we have company, it's like dealing cards. You go in next, you go in next, you go in next. <laughs> I'll have your places. Yes. Yes, and the, the, half of the men sit down before all the women sit down, too. Oh, okay. <laughs> and there are doors on uh, in that dining on, room, too. On the, and, uh, on the and, china cabinet. And those are carved by The Rosemary? same woman, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Very interesting. Yeah, and all she, she made, uh, we have a coffee table here, and she mm. made that also. Oh, well, you gave her a lot of business. <laughs> we did give her a lot of business. Mm. and. Um, but it's very handsome, and it goes We're so well. We're very happy. So We're well. really happy with this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks. Now, Ruth and Wallace, we're standing in your courtyard, what you call your your courtyard, and I can't help but just uh, be astounded by your beautiful wisteria. And I understand, Ruth, that that has some some history in in your in your family, the the Job family. The Job family, yes, we've always always had a, a wisteria there. We actually have three here now. Two bloom early, and two one blooms late. So we have a long. Uh, season of flowers and you're very fortunate to be here right at its height. It's just beautiful. Yes, congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> and the, the trunk on the wisteria is just the biggest I've ever it's seen. quite large, isn't it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just really mm -hmm. remarkable. Yes. It just keeps going on and on. Yeah. Now, um, Wallace, I understand that you are responsible for this, this fountain that's gurgling behind us. What can you tell us about that? Well, it was my uh, post-retirement uh, project. And uh, I built it uh, by putting in a concrete liner, and uh, re we recirculate the water. It comes up through a sandstone uh, grinding wheel, which we uh, obtained from the Argonaut mine in uh, 
the gold country of California. And uh, it's very handsome. And you said there's a light that goes through there, it. There's a light inside the casting from which the fountain originates. So when you have a dinner party or something uh, in, in the evening, you can actually turn on the fountain and see a light. The light shines right up the column of water. Oh, that's interesting. Now, also, I noticed that there's some, some more ironwork on the second story. Was that also uh, built by your son who, who did the gate? No, uh, this was done by our older son. Oh, who... The whole family gets involved in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he... Uh, we had an instructor give him lessons on welding, and this is, was his first project. Oh, it's really very handsome. He probably Thank was you. about 18 years old, or 17 or 18 when he made that. 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. Now, this wall, uh, Wallace was telling me, was built by your son, who uh, served in uh, Vietnam. Yes, uh, this we call a therapy wall, because when he returned from Vietnam, he, he wasn't in the best shape, and so he and I build it together. Well, it's very handsome, and it's a very nice addition to uh, uh, your your courtyard. I can see why you call it a courtyard when you when you when you when you actually look at this wall. It sort of encloses you, and you feel very protected back here. Mm -hmm. So you must spend a lot of time in the summer back here, don't do you? Ruth? A lot of time. We yeah. eat outdoors um, an awful lot in the summertime. Uh, Ruth, this redwood tree that we're standing under is. Uh, um, looks like it's been here for quite a long time. It has been here for a long time. My father and mother planted that tree and it grows at that, it grew at the rate of about three feet a year and it's still growing. It's about 125 feet tall. The tree behind us I brought back from Girl Scout camp from the Theodore Hoover ranch over by Pescadero in a wow. coffee can. Oh, no kidding, in a yes, coffee that's can? My, that's my, my tree. Could you imagine <laughs> uh, carrying that home now? <laughs> no way. No way. Thanks. Now, Wallace, I understand, from Ruth, I, we, we learned that uh, the front gate is, was, was probably constructed by her father, but this gate that we're standing in front of has its own history, doesn't it? Yes, it was uh, fabricated by our son, who's a welding engineer, and uh, it's my design, a, a very simple design, but it, uh, I think, has an artistic value. It's very, very beautiful. So. Um, what is it? What is the material? It's uh, wrought iron. Wrought iron. And it's been bent uh, to form the shape and then welded together. And I noticed that there's a, another uh, railing up, up, up above that was also in the same design. Did he make that as well? Uh, well, our oldest son did that. Oh, uh, the oldest son. He learned to weld early. Since I'm a metallurgical engineer, our, our children are in involved in welding of metals. And so we have it there on that balcony and on the other balcony on the other side of the front of the house. So I can see that this is a really a family operation here. You have lots of talent uh, for decorating your home. We like to do uh, a lot of the handicraft ourselves. That's wonderful.